thousands of people have come out saying, I was swimming in this stuff and now I have non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. People who didn't smoke, people who are in their 40s, people who should not be getting this terrible disease. And I, along with several other law firms, have now filed thousands and thousands of cases as part of this litigation. We have access to 10, 15 million pages of documents that Monsanto has produced to us. We get to see all of these documents that the public normally doesn't get to see. And we've said to Monsanto, listen, these documents contain real concerns about public health and people need to see them. And Monsanto got on the phone with me and told me to go away. They had 30 days to file a motion seeking their continued protection. The order says if they fail to file the motion, the confidentiality is automatically waived. So I waited 30 days and they didn't do it. They just made a mistake. So I released them. First thing I did is I sent them to the European regulators, I sent them to the California regulators, I sent them to the EPA. I also put them on our website. The result was staggering and Monsanto realized that they had a problem. Attorney Brent Wisner joins us along with the founder of the Institute for Responsible Technology and author of Seeds of Deception, Jeffrey Smith. Also joining us via Skype is oncologist Dr. Joseph Toscano. We did invite Monsanto to be a part of the conversation, but they ultimately declined. I want to start with you, Brent. What initially instigated your desire to become involved in this lawsuit? We were actually approached by a person who was a family friend, and they had suffered non-Hodgkin's lymphoma and actually had passed away. And when we started researching this case and looking into it, what we found was just unbelievable. Uh, study after study uh, was showing that there's a real problem here with glyphosate, and in fact, Roundup. And really what happened from there was there's been a, a whirlwind of individuals coming out of the woodwork, not just farmers, but people who use this at home, people who use this on their property, landscapers, city workers, people you don't normally expect to be exposed to these types of bioagricultural chemicals. And they're all saying, yeah, I have non-Hopkins lymphoma, and I haven't used anything except glyphosate, and I thought it was safe. And so that's how we sort of got pulled into it. And it's been a long, sort of difficult process. And we're moving for making steps every day towards getting to a, hopefully a resolution on it. You mentioned in the tape piece uncovering or dispersing emails to the public that were previously confidential. What kinds of emails were those? And even if you wanted to share some of those with our viewers, feel free to. One of the things people don't realize is these documents never see the light of day, right? And we as lawyers get to see behind the curtain and see all these really alarming statements. And I think we have a couple that we want to talk about here that are really Ill illustrative of the problem. We had Dr. Farmer on this show saying this stuff's safe. I'm a mother and it's fine. But we have an email from her from 2003 where she says the terms glyphosate and Roundup cannot be used interchangeably. For example, you cannot say that Roundup is not a carcinogen. We have not done the necessary testing on the formulation to make that statement. This is Dr. Farmer, the chief toxicologist within Monsanto saying, we actually haven't tested Roundup. This is a common misunderstanding. Roundup is not the same as glyphosate. Glyphosate is part of Roundup, but Roundup is actually glyphosate plus a bunch of other chemicals that make it more potent. And one of the ways that Monsanto has avoided disclosing the risk is by just studying glyphosate in isolation and not actually looking at what people use every day in their homes.